Being skinned alive has got to be one of the most horrifying forms of torture imaginable. It's a bloody, painful and slow process and you'll be conscious the entire time. Being skinned alive is first documented as happening around 800 BC has been used as a form of torture in just about every century since, somewhere on Earth. It was practiced by the ancient Aztecs, as well as ancient people in Greece, China, and on the continent of Africa. Of course, it was also performed all over medieval Europe, especially as a punishment for traitors and other heinous criminals. While flaying is rarely seen nowadays, that doesn't make the concept any less horrifyingly fascinating. So let's look at what it's like to be skinned alive in all the gory details. As you might expect, peeling the skin off an entire human being is kind of a difficult task. Given this knowledge, you might find that when someone flays you, you're in for a bit of prep work first to make the skinning easier. Some cultures like to warm up the skin to loosen it from the muscles and make it more easy to peel off. And there were two common ways of doing that. The first way involves leaving you out in the hot sun all day until your skin gets red and burned. This tenderizes your skin, also prolongs your torture. The second method is even worse. You are dipped alive into boiling water to loosen your skin, but before you are boiled alive. This can add blindness, nerve damage, and scorched lungs to your injuries. And this is before anyone even makes a cut. The torture begins with some very specific and calculated cuts. In general, the first skin to be peeled off is that of the face. After that, your body has to be scored in various places to allow the skin to remove easily in one piece. This involves relief cutting around the arms and wrists, the chest and the neck, and sometimes the feet. These cuts will not be incredibly deep, but they will extend through all individual layers of skin so as to reach the area between your skin and the muscle itself. This means that you can expect horrifying amounts of pain. It is said that the sharper the knife used, the less painful it will be. So you'd hope that the torturers do regular maintenance on their blades. In general, flaying is all about pulling off your skin in large unbroken sheets so it can be better displayed. Not only is there historic writing about flaying, there is also physical evidence. In particular, the ancient church of Hadstock in Essex held a legend of Dane who had committed sacrilege being flayed as punishment. It was said that his skin was spread out and nailed to the door of the church as a sign to others to never mess up as badly as that Dane had. Flaying will be the worst pain you'd ever experience. Your nerve endings extend into the deep layers of your skin, enabling your sense of touch. It's why our fingertips are so sensitive. It also means our skin getting damaged causes a strong pain response. When you are flayed, your skin is literally ripped off, not cut little by little. This ripping motion means that your nerve endings are not severed cleanly. Instead, they are torn to shreds one by one in a long train of agony. You're going to feel your skin being ripped off your muscles and you're going to feel your nerve endings dying. In other words, you're going to feel all of it. There are several ways that flame can end your life, and one of these is blood loss. However, this type of death doesn't happen very quickly. Believe it or not, people can actually survive quite a bit of blood loss. You can lose 40% or even more of your blood before you actually die from it. Assuming you're hanging upside down, as is often the case, you'll see and feel the blood rushing past your face and onto the ground. It'll be coming all over your body. Not exactly a great thing to see as you feel someone peeling the skin off your entire body. Infection will start to set in right away, though something else is likely to kill you before this does. Infection is a serious problem with flaying. Your skin is a vital organ that protects your blood and muscle from foreign invaders like bacteria and viruses. Without it, every part of your exposed body is open to attack. Infections can get into your bloodstream 
spread to vital organs and even make your body septic given enough time. Assuming you survive long enough, despite the blood loss and pain, the ensuing infection will definitely kill you. As this is happening to you, your brain is going to be getting a ton of signals from the rest of your body. Your nervous system is going to be pretty much screaming for help and your brain only has a few ways it can possibly respond. One way it can react is to shut down parts of your body or shut down the body altogether. The other is by trying to make you feel better even as you're beginning to die. When the brain is faced with extreme pain and stress it begins to release chemicals to counteract these negative feelings. Some of these chemicals are called endorphins and they help to transmit electrical signals throughout the body. They act similarly to morphine, numbing you and giving you a feeling of happiness. Of course, these feelings probably won't be enough to even slightly counteract the horror and agony of the experience. Your skin is one of the strongest defenses against the cold. Without it, your blood, muscles and nerves will be exposed to the cold air. And even if it's not freezing outside, that can begin to do you in. In fact, one of the causes of death from flame is actually hypothermia. Luckily, death from hypothermia is actually fairly easy and painless. So that's one much needed reprieve from your torture. Although the initial sensation of having your skin ripped off is going to be agonizing, that pain may not last very long. Because your skin is literally being torn off of you, you're not just going to be damaging your nerve endings. The fatty layer around them will actually be destroyed so they can never grow back. That means that before long, they'll stop filling all together. All this is assuming that they take off every layer of skin. In some cases of flaying, people only take an outer layer off. And in other cases, they even take some of the flesh underneath the skin off as well. In other words, you'd better hope that your torturers are doing it right, or else the pain could last much longer than expected. As this starts to happen, your body, brain, and nerves are all going to start completely freaking out. Electrical impulses are going to be misfiring. Your brain will be trying to handle it, and you'll probably be more terrified than you've ever been in your life. So, as you might expect, you're going to go into shock. Shock happens when there's not enough blood moving through your body to get oxygen to all your cells. You'll be losing blood and fear will also be causing dips in your blood pressure, both of which can lead to shock. This means that you'll be feeling dizzy, confused, and like you can't breathe. You may also experience cold and hot flashes and you may feel sick to your stomach. And maybe, just maybe, you may be lucky enough to lose consciousness. If you start to lose consciousness, your torturers may try to keep you conscious through various means, including hitting you or hanging you upside down. But even then, sometimes the pain and the blood loss will be just too great. Your brain will realize that it's all too much to deal with. And in an act of self-preservation, it will tell the rest of your body to simply shut down. Your blood pressure will drop and you'll probably stop being awake, a state from which you'll probably never recover. It's worth noting that this fainting was actually pretty common in flaying in victims over the centuries. Some accounts even say that most people who are being skinned alive lost consciousness before they were even flayed to the wrist. Given the horrible sensation of being skinned alive, this fainting is probably a welcome blessing. Flaying rarely causes a quick death, it's true that some people die from shock or blood loss within hours and may lose consciousness so they don't have to experience the rest of the pain. But more likely, you'll be aware and awake throughout the entire ordeal and may last a while even afterwards. There are reports of people surviving hours and even several days after being skinned alive, presumably in excruciating agony the entire time. In these cases, it's not actually blood loss that proves fatal. If you survive a day of being skinless, infection and hypothermia are going to get to you. Your blood may turn septic, or you may just be unable to keep yourself warm enough to survive. Either way, you'll be better off wishing for a quick death from shock or wishing for literally any method of torture other than flaying. <laughs>